Okay, so we talked about kind of the fundamental reasons why cities exist. Now we're going to think about where, like what are the location, uh, what determines the location of, uh, of cities? Okay. All right. Now, so there are some kind of different theories. One is location fundamentals, like there are something special about that location. For instance, New Orleans is located at the end of the Mississippi, where the Mississippi uh, hits the ocean. Um, so that's something special about that location. You know, uh, San Francisco, you know, there's something special about San Francisco. It has access to this great um, harbor. Another theory would be like, you know, yeah, those are important, but really once the city gets going, it's really the increasing returns of scale. And if all of a sudden San Francisco's harbor was filled in tomorrow, um, San Francisco would go on because really what matters is the uh, increasing returns of scale. After some initial shock or some initial impetus for the city locating there, it's all increasing returns of scale. Another theory would be, uh, uh, it's just random. It's just, <laughs> it's just random when cities become uh, big. Now with the location fundamental theory, you could think of, so why is there say a big city? It's like a pile of location advantages. So you like take LA. LA has the harbor, um, you know, not, not the greatest harbor, but a harbor. Um, LA uh, has a river um, that at one point was semi-useful for trade. Um, LA has um, this quirk of history where the film industry is here. LA has this other quirk of history where the aerospace industry uh, is, is, is located here. And then LA also has ocean and nice weather, which make it a place people want to live outside of all those other things. And so it's just like a stack of location advantages that lead to a super large city. You could stack those up with New York too, as, as to why perhaps New York is uh, a, a large city. Okay. All right. So the city, so the theory is there's some sort of valuable resource, okay? Whether that be a tangible resource like oil or gold or something like that, or something like weather, nice weather. Um, okay, so our key, typically our, our key ones throughout history are water, um, just makes it easy to uh, transport thing. And then of course, other, other types of resources. Okay, so the implications of the location fundamentals idea is that we should see cities near key resources. Like if we see a large city, we should be able to pinpoint what was the key um, advantage. All right, and as I said, the more of these resources, the larger the city is. Now, these cities should be there as long as the resource remains valuable. And if the resource goes away, the city should decline in importance. All right. So let's look at the first implication. Cities should be near key uh, resources. Um, so here, this picture is from the uh, gold rush, um, the, um, you know, the original populating event of, uh, of California in US history. Um, and so, you know, there's gold, all of a sudden a bunch of people move um, to uh, that area. Another way of looking at it, here you have, you know, the key resource is water or, you know, being close to a transportation network. And um, this is essentially, so about 50% of the U.S. population in 2000 um, was located in these coastal counties. Um, this was in 2000. So if you fast forward to 2020, this would be even higher. This would be like 60% is located in these key, these coastal counties. All right. And then here we are, you know, the way to look at that is look at the relative density. So the darker, the more dense the county is. And again, you can see usually your dense counties, many of them are right on, so this is, these are on the Great Lakes up here, you know, or on the Pacific or Atlantic Ocean with a few exceptions, um, which actually these ones right here, we will get to later uh, in the lecture. These are actually, these are, there's actually water is playing, playing a role in these cities um, as well. Okay, and you see over time, the U.S. has become uh, a much more coastal, um, uh, coastal country, people living on the coast, coast. And this, you know, has only, has only continued. Okay, just a, just a brief, a brief tangent, like what is so special about the ocean? And there are a couple different things. One is 
you know, it's, it's, uh, it, it, it provides access to trade networks. Okay. The second thing is the quality of life. The weather is much better near, uh, near the ocean, right? You can even see this in, in LA. The weather is much better in Santa Monica than it is on the east, uh, on the east side. Um, other reasons why maybe the ocean ocean is good initially for transportation, but the ones that goes away, uh, people just continue to live there. So there's a bunch of di- there's a bunch of different reasons why the ocean might be a particular um, value. Um, but this paper uh, from 1999 um, really says natural advantages still matter, even in the even in the modern world um, where people are most you know like many firms are not directly engaged. Um, in trade, uh, the, those those uh, those resources are still uh, important. Okay, second imp- implication of the location fundamental theory is that these locations should be permanent as long as that resource is still valuable. Okay, and so if we want to test uh, this idea, what we need is some sort of uh, shock. Something where, uh, you know, the city size goes down for some reason. And then we want to see if, like, this, you know, if we're going to run in, run in, run in an experiment, experiment about loca- location fundamentals. What you want is, you know, a city that has good location fundamentals, like it's near some key resources. And we want to somehow get rid of the population and see if it comes back. And, you know, take a, you know, then have like some sort of control group um, where that doesn't happen. Um, that would be kind of the key experiment that we would like to run. Now, of course, we can't do that experiment in the real world, but what, what economists and economic historians do is they look through history. So they see if there's some sort of historical episode or natural experiment that kind of mimics your idealized laboratory uh, experiment. And so World War II provides such uh, an experiment. And so what happened in World War II, you know, many cities were bombed, um, were decimated. They're essentially bombed uh, into nothing. And so this is a super famous paper um, from 2002 by Davis and Weinstein. And what they do is they basically use Japan as that setting. Um, And so Japan is a very developed country um, at the onset of World War II. So we have many, many large cities, many cities with over 30,000 in uh, in population. Um, and we have good data. So the second thing you need is you need like, you know, good data to, to measure this. And so there's uh, fairly good census data um, taken every five years, of course, except for, you know, right after um, the war. Now, what they also have is data from the U.S. about bombing. So, you know, the U.S. is at war with Japan. Uh, in World War II, they bomb the Japanese cities. They bomb them rather um, a- 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 extensively. All right, so in many of these, uh, so we we got 66 cities, which the U.S. had basically targeted for bombing. Um, And um, we have about half half the structure destroyed, um, two thirds of the productive capacity destroyed. We have uh, 300,000 people died, 40,000 of the population lost their homes, uh, 40% of the population lost their homes. And, you know, in some cities, you have like half the city um, uh, dies as a result of these bombing campaigns. Um, and so, you know, kind of the median is that half of the area was destroyed. And you have variation, though, too. So, I mean, basically all of Tokyo is leveled and much of it is leveled in one night, the firebombing of Tokyo. So I don't know how much World War II history you guys are familiar with. But, you know, of course, everyone kind of knows about uh, Hiroshima and uh, Nagasaki. Um, which were hit with the uh, atomic bombs and, you know, completely decimated. But what most people don't know is there's extensive firebombing campaign before that um, that was just as destructive in terms of leveling uh, cities and loss of life. Um, so Tokyo is firebombed and basically decimated. Now, from an economic history standpoint, okay, of course, you know, we don't want to minimize the loss of life. Um, you know, that's obviously tragic. Uh, but from an economic history standpoint, what we are looking at is a, you know, a natural experiment where some cities are completely decimated. Other cities survive unscathed. Um, that gives us variation so we can estimate uh, these effects. You essentially need treatment and uh, control groups. And so um, from an economic history research standpoint, of course, again, obviously this is a catastrophe, but from an economic history 
uh, experiment standpoint, you do have some cities that were uh, uh, spared, which gives you the variation. You have some cities decimated, some cities uh, not bombed at all. So Kyoto is not bombed because it is uh, the historic capital of, uh, of Japan. It has a lot of cultural sites. So the U.S. decided not to bomb it for, uh, for historical uh, reasons. You have Niigata and Kitakyushu. Now, they are not bombed either because they are preserved as potential uh, future uh, targets for the atomic bomb. Uh, Sapporo was, uh, or Sapporo, uh, was um, escaped because it was too far north. So the bombers can't, uh, can't reach it. Okay. There's also variation in the U.S. improves its techniques. So cities that were bombed later in the war suffered much more than cities that were bombed earlier in the war. So what this gives the researcher is you have some cities that are unscathed, some cities that have a little bit of bombing, some cities that have a lot of bomb, bombing, and then some cities that are completely decimated. So you have variation in the extent of, um, uh, uh, of, uh, of the destruction. Okay, now we're gonna get into the model that the paper uses. We'll take a break before we get hit with a ton of, uh, ton of math.